In this video, you will find out more about how to find information for your history research topic. Let's start at the beginning. What does research mean? Research involves carefully studying something in order to find information about it. Research involves finding facts in an organised way. What is a source? In their research, people who study history use sources. A source is something or someone that supplies information. A source is a clue that archaeologists and historians use to find out about the past. Types of sources. People who study history divide sources into two main types. These are called primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are first-hand evidence. Primary sources come from the time being studied. If you are looking at the decade of centenaries, then a diary someone wrote during the War of Independence is a primary source. An interview today with an eyewitness of events would also be a primary source. Secondary sources come from after the time being studied. Your history textbook is a secondary source. If you can, you should try to use a mixture of both types of sources in your project. Different sources can tell you about different sides of a topic. It's also a good idea to check information with a few different sources to make sure the information is correct. This is especially the case if you've found information that seems surprising or unexpected. There are different kinds of primary and secondary sources. Historians use a big range of different types of sources. They may all look very different to each other, but they all give information about the past. Some sources are written. Examples of written sources include history books, letters, diaries, newspapers and official documents. Can you think of other types of written sources? This is a page from the Decade of Change study pack. It is a written source that deals with Donegal and the Decade of Centenaries. This source is available on the Donegal County Archives website. It might be useful to you for your research project. Some sources are oral or spoken. Oral history is a way to learn about the past through the spoken stories of people who lived through the, event, the events. It involves recording people's memories, experiences and opinions. Have you ever asked your grandparents about their past? This is a type of oral history. Visual sources include painting, posters, film and photography. This photograph of the Ulster Volunteer Force in Lifford is a visual source. Artifacts are things that were made or used by people. Archaeologists are interested in artefacts. An archaeologist learns about what people did or how they lived by studying the items they have left behind. Buildings can also be sources that help historians and archaeologists learn about the past. This suitcase is an artefact that belonged to Superintendent Joseph Murray. It was donated to the Donegal County Archives by his son. Joseph Murray was involved in the War of Independence in Donegal. He kept all his records of his involvement and his medals from the War of Independence in his suitcase. These records were digitised, which means they were turned into a form that can be easily read on a computer. You can now read all his records on the Donegal County Archives website. Why do you think that it might be a good idea to use a mixture of sources? I'm sure some of you have heard the words fake news. 
This is not a modern idea. Some sources of history are not reliable or accurate. Historians use complicated words to mean something like fake news. These are words like bias, prejudice, or propaganda. What these words really mean is that when you are looking at sources, remember that the people who wrote, spoke, or made them were just like people today and could be wrong sometimes. Some people have a certain point of view, like or dislike a group of people, they might deliberately leave out information, or they might be trying to convince you about something. What sources should you avoid? One source that you should avoid using is Wikipedia, because anyone can write or change their articles. How can you tell if a source is reliable? You should look for sources on official sites like educational, museum or library sites. You should double check your information and try to look for the author's name on articles. Do you think sources like these could still be useful? They can be, but you do have to be careful. These sources could show you more about how people with opposite points of view felt about each other. This is an example of fake news from 1916. Elizabeth O'Farrell went with Patrick Pierce to surrender. You can just see the bottom of her dress and her shoes on the photograph on the left. On the photo on the right, you can see that she's been airbrushed out of the photo. There are loads of places where you can find information about Donegal during this period. Donegal County Library and County Museum in Letterkenny and Donegal County Archives in Lifford are places where you can find information about the decade of centenaries and Donegal. You can't visit them at the moment, but you can find information on their websites. This is the Central Library in Letterkenny. Normally, you could go to the Donegal Studies section upstairs or look at old newspapers there but you can still order books from the library. And if you have a tablet, laptop or phone and a library card, you can order eBooks. The Donegal County Archives have a lot of information and booklets on their website. You could also look on the County Museum website. Now I'm going to talk to you about some of the places online where you can get primary sources about the decade of centenaries. These are the military archives, the IFI Independence Film Collection and the census. This is the military archives. It's a really amazing source of information if you are trying to find out about the military side of the decade of centenaries. When I'm talking about the military, I am talking about the armed forces or army and the wars that were going on at the time. So if you want to find out more about the Easter Rising, the Irish Volunteers, the IRA, the War of Independence or the Civil War, or the people who were involved in these events, then this is the site to go to. In the past, the only way to see the military archives was to travel to the military archives in Dublin. And this is it here. In this image, you can see the boxes where the archives are stored. There is loads of information on the military archives, but the whole collection is not online yet. The project to put the military archives documents online is still going on. That means that if you are looking for someone, but you can't find them on the military archives website, then they still might have been involved, but their story might not yet be online. One problem you might find when you're having a look at this site is that it's so big that it is hard to know where to start. You should start by looking at in the online collections. The most useful section for you 
will probably be the Military Service Pensions Collection. After the Irish Free State was set up, the Irish government gave pensions and medals to some of the people who had fought in the War of Independence and the Civil War. You can find information about these people on this page here. To prove who should get a pension, the government collected files to learn what had happened in different parts of the country. The Brigade Activity Reports show you what different IRA brigades around the country were doing. Don't pay attention to this map here. Almost everything is missing from it. If you go to the bottom of the page, you can find a list of all the IRA activities in Donegal during this time. You look here and you pick Donegal as the county. For example, if we have a look at this attack here in Lifford, we can find a map of where the event took place, some details about what happened, the original document about the event and a link to more information about the IRA brigade that was involved. If we go back to the Military Service Pensions Collection page, you can go to the section on the War of Independence, where you can find out more about the War of Independence, like about who died, some of the executions that took place, and some of the major events of the time. You can use the Military Service Collection to find the people who were involved in the War of Independence or the Civil War. You go here to search the collection, down here, and then you fill in the details that you know. I am looking for a woman called Ethna Coyle. It can be really hard to find women in old records because if they got married, their names changed. Here are Ethna's records. You can see here that her name changed when she got married to Ethna O'Donnell. This is Ethna Coyle here. Ethna Coyle was a woman from Donegal who had a very interesting story. Ethna was really active in Common Naman in Donegal and she was also an organiser for the Gaelic League. During the War of Independence she was a fundraiser, courier, which means she transported things like weapons or letters, and a spy. The British authorities became really suspicious of her. Her house was raided and she was finally arrested and sent to Mountjoy Jail, but Ethna escaped. Like a lot of common Naman women, she was on the anti-treaty side of the Civil War. She was in Glenvey during the Civil War, and again she acted as a courier, spy, fundraiser, and she ran an IRA hospital. She was arrested in 1922, and she spent the rest of the Civil War in jail. If you want to learn more about the military history of the Decade of Centenaries, then you should have a look through the Military Archives website and you should have a look through their collections. You can find things like maps and plans. You can find more information about Michael Collins. And you can find army newspapers like the Irish Volunteer and Antogluck. If you look in the National Archives website, you can find the 1901 and 1911 Irish censuses online. A census is an official government count of all the people who were in the country at the time. The census can give you loads of information about people, like what their job was, what language they spoke, and where and how they lived. Go here to the top of the page to search the census. The census can be a bit tricky to use. You need to spell a name exactly right to find someone. When the 1911 census was taken, a lot of people in Ireland had become more nationalist and in the census they gave their names in Irish. 
I am going to look in the 1901 census for a man called Thomas McShay who lived in Donegal. And this is him here in 1901. Thomas was a carpenter from Bundoran. He was involved in the Irish Volunteers and Sinn Féin. He became the commanding officer of the South Donegal 1st Battalion. During the War of Independence, he was involved in raids, ambushes and sabotage. He was arrested in 1921 and he tried to escape, but during the escape, two RIC men were killed. He was sentenced to death, but he escaped when Michael Collins negotiated. And if I click here, I can find his house and his family where he lived in 1901. At that time, he was 15 years old and he lived with his brother, Joseph, and his mother, Catherine. If I click here, show all information, I find some more information about the family. The mother was from County Sligo and she was married and they were all farmers. If I scroll down the bottom of the page here, I can find the household return form. So this is a really amazing document if you're trying to find your own family. Because if you look here down at the bottom of the page, if the head of the household could write and read, then they would have signed their name. So if you can find this document for your own family, then you might find a signature from one of your ancestors. And here is the house and building return form. So this document tells you more about that type of house that the family lived in. It's a bit hard to read, but if you can read joint writing, then down the bottom of the page, we have Catherine McShay. And here, this column here tells you about the class of house they live in. So do you remember the first class house and the second class house? So Catherine McShay lived in a third class house. So the family would have lived in one of the poorer types of houses. This is a photograph of Thomas McShay as an older man. You could use the census to try to find Irish leaders who were important in the country during the decade of centenaries. However, it can be hard to find people and there's a quicker way to find them. Use Google and search for the census and 1916. You will get to this website, the CSO, which gives you links to census entries for many Irish leaders. And if we go here to census and the women of the rising, it can be hard to find some of the women leaders in the census. As a protest, some women who were suffragettes refused to be listed on the census. Suffragettes campaigned for women's right to vote. This is the War of Independence film collection and you can find it on the IFI player. These films are called newsreels. Television didn't become more common until the 1950s. In the 1920s, the only type of film news that people could watch were the newsreels that were played when they went to the cinema. They were very popular at the time and were used during wartime to convince people about the government's message. They can show us how people lived and show us what the government at the time wanted people to see. Ireland didn't have its own newsreel company. Most of these newsreels were made by British companies. When you're watching the videos, remember that their point of view was often in favour of Britain and the British authorities. These newsreels are silent films, but when they were played in the cinema, they would normally have had piano accompaniment. These piano players were really skilled they changed what and how they played depending on what the newsreels were showing. This is a film about the Battle of Balik and Pettigrew. 
Today, these two towns are on either side of the border between Donegal and Fermanagh. Just before the Civil War broke out, when the country was already divided by the treaty, there was a battle in Pettigo and Balik between the IRA and the British forces. This was the largest military action between British forces and the IRA since the Easter Rising. Here you can see armoured vehicles and troops. The event is also interesting because it was one of the last times that pro and anti-treaty IRA fought together. It took around 1,500 British forces about two weeks to capture the two towns that were held by around 150 members of the IRA. It has been called the last major battle of the War of Independence. Here you can see guns, called howitzer guns, being fired on Balik. Do you notice the pair of shoes that have been left in the fort on the ground? Have a look through the IFI player because it's a source of some really amazing footage from the time. <laughs> 